Hello and welcome back everyone. Happy Thursday. The first Thursday that has been happy in over a month. For a month we've been getting sad Thursdays, but today we have a happy Thursday. Uh, we are going to be doing a little bit of a dev diary. It's a very short dev diary. Very, very short. Um, detailing a little bit of a patch that's going to have some bug fixes and such. Um, and then it's also talking about when we're going to have the next happy Thursday, which unfortunately is not next Thursday, but the following Thursday, which is, you know, we get happy news happy news of unhappy news but happy news after that so um we'll we'll settle for that we do have the happy thursday intro perfect it's capitalized as a holiday we don't have the happy thursday sandwich where they wish us a happy thursday in the outro but we're so desperate for happy that we'll settle for whatever we can get and so without further ado Happy Thursday, and welcome back to the uh, first of many development diaries before the end of the year. After a terrific launch and reception of Sphere of Influence, that is singular Sphere of Influence, because we always say spheres, and we always forget, but it is singular, in June, followed by several hotfixes with improvements and bug fixes, many devs on the team took a well-deserved vacation during July. We have now reassembled, that is, uh, they, have, they were disassembled, now they reassembled, just like the Avengers, um, and can't wait to tell you what we've been working on over, over the summer, and what's coming for the later half of 2024. Um, first up, uh, I want to talk about Hotfix 1.7.6, which should reach you in a few weeks and consists of a few high-impact fixes and improvements we've been working on during the summer, alongside uh, work on update 1.8 that I think you'll enjoy. Now, a few weeks, is that like three to eight, or is that a couple, or is... A few is like a word that, uh, to me, it means roughly three to eight, um, but people often have wildly De uh, like wildly different definitions of what a few constitutes so that it's um, not really possible to know what people mean by this. If you, if anyone has an opinion on what it is and why it's three to eight, please let me know. Uh, <laughs> first, improvements to the abdicate uh, resign character interact. So this is fantastic. This is just uh, super, super easy to abuse. It's a very abusive play pattern. And one thing that they added in 1.7 was a whole lot more radicalism that um, would make the choice to go high taxes uh, more of a choice and also on um, you know, high taxes, they nerfed high taxes themselves, making them cause more radicalism by both decreasing legitimacy and having it just cause more radicalism. Currently, um, the ability to just abuse the abdicate resign mechanic uh, allows you to just kind of ignore the fact that you are generating a lot of radicals and occasionally you have some radicals. The really important thing is that when they start causing turmoil to make construction worse, um, this is when you have to get rid of them. Uh, but uh, you just uh, cause a bunch of radicals, you abdicate, you get 25% loyalists and then you're just like off to the races just continuing to crank high taxes so you can construct some more. Um, and so it's really easy to abuse and also easy to to abuse to force laws through. Uh, these interactions have been exploited in the past to cycle through rulers in decidedly unfun ways. I don't know, I've been having fun, but certainly unrealistic ways, uh, allowing you to like slingshot, um, uh, slingshot past laws in a way that is just completely obtuse and would never happen uh, by forcing revolutions. There's the, the key. The key problem is that you can force. Um, you can, by passing laws you don't actually want to pass, you can force um, a group to get insurrectionary um, that wants a law that you actually want to pass and then you just abdicate to the group. Um, and so uh, I, I don't know exactly how you fix it. And the fix that they're going to detail isn't like a full fix, but let's read through it. To address this while retaining their overall intent, the conditions for the ruler to abdicate or resign are much more narrow. Perfect, this is a great start, uh, but can still be performed when a revolution to enact or restore a law is heating up. Um, so we'll see exactly what they are, but they might include that um, the person in the abdication group has to be upset um, uh, in addition to just to there being a revolutionary movement. Currently, you only need a revolutionary movement. And if they add a little bit more friction, um, that will be good. Really where I think they should address it is that it shouldn't give you so many loyalists. Um, and that's, uh, or the loyalists that give you should be like proportionate to, um, the, how upset the groups or how many l radicals the groups that are currently agitating for that you are, that are about to rev, how much of those, um, what proportion of your, uh, of your radicals those groups are. And the higher the proportion of the radicals, the more loyalists you get. Uh, but if most of your radicals are on the groups that are actually doing the abdicating, it doesn't make sense that you could generate a lot of loyalists. Uh, you'll be alerted when these conditions are valid, and abdicating or resigning during such a situation will decrease radicalism of the movement, um, giving you a bit more headroom to come to a peaceful revolution. Now, if they're just decreasing the radicalism of the movement and not decreasing radicalism uh, entirely, 
um, then that's a huge nerf. And if that's what they mean when they say this, uh, then that's fantastic. Um, it's also giving you a bit more headroom to come to a peaceful resolution. Uh, what I'm taking from this is it's not auto-passing the law and is instead making the movement weaker. Um, but if that's actually all it does, then abdications are hugely nerfed and now you actually may, might not want to run max taxes from the very game start um, in a lot of situations. So be excited to see this. Uh, this is definitely a play pattern that's super easy to abuse. Um, I actually uh, got a DM from a dev that... Um, was regarding a fix that I suggested, but I don't check my DMs on Discord often enough because I'm I'm bad at Discord, um, and it was like a week and a half ago. Uh, hopefully they uh, introduced that change, which is like I proposed or have been suggesting, which is a nerf to bankrolls as well. As well, but currently um, this is one of the most abusable things, uh, and if they if they make it not as abusable, um, the game will operate like more in a parameter that's like historically reasonable. Um, bankrolls a uh, bankroll nerf as well, but I don't think we have that. Uh, in here um, or addressed or mentioned. Uh, the forced nationalization war goal uh, currently only transfers building owned by another country directly to you. That is, if they have private citizens that own the buildings, it does not seize them, uh, which makes it super useless. And on, in addition to this, forced nationalization kind of costs a lot of infamy, uh, and so it's often not worth it. It might be worth it on unrecognized power specifically, um, but we'll, we'll continue on saying what they're going to say. Uh, but with 1.7.6, it will also affect building owned by the POPs, that is manor houses and financial districts in the targeted country, letting you uh, kind of control a uh, country out of your economic economy completely with one fell swoop. This will be a nice change. And it also might introduce a bit of a strategy. So currently, uh, forced nationalization, unfortunately, it's not based on the amount of um, uh, buildings that are owned, uh, but is instead based on the population. Um, uh, of a country, uh, which means that uh, it's really expensive, even if they own just a few buildings, uh, which is kind of a weird way of scaling. But in particular, uh, using forced nationalization on unrecognized powers, after you get all the unrecognized powers uh, reduction of uh, infamy modifiers, this might be really good. So what uh, might be the really strong strategy is giving someone like China investment rights in your country, uh, letting their financial houses, uh, their financial districts, because China never builds construction. They just sit on like 10 construction for forever. So they just get an infinity sized investment pool. Um, letting all of their manor houses buy your buildings and they buy your buildings effectively on a discount. They cost them roughly a third of the price it takes you to construct these buildings. But um, that third is free for you if you are going to eventually force nationalize them. And so what might be a decent strategy is uh, letting China foreign invest in you, buy a whole ton of your buildings, uh, you know, facilitate your crank up and then force nationalize them on them with significantly reduced um, war score cost. Um, and so in this way, it might be the case that this is a strategy you can execute. Uh, I think we're going to make a video on foreign investment at some point. Um, and once the details of this are a little bit more well known, uh, that'll maybe be a, a strategy that's reasonable. I currently think that it's probably still too much infamy for this war goal. But China really does have an enormous investment pool. And if you think of it from the perspective of all your buildings only cost two thirds of what they normally cost, um, there's just a delay, i.e. before you force nationalize, um, uh, then maybe this is actually just a really strong play pattern. That'll be interesting to see. Uh, but currently forced nationalization is just super useless because if China has a bunch of manor houses and those manor houses buy a bunch of buildings in our country, um, then uh, like we can't force nationalize those buildings and it's stupid and it's, it, should be, it should be changed. But it'll be interesting if this introduces new strategies. Um, I, I would love to see the forced nationalization war goal feel good uh, regardless. And I think it only feels good if they um, decrease the infamy or make the infamy scale with the number of buildings you're nationalizing um, and make it like, I don't know, uh, 0.01 uh, infamy per like building you're nationalizing or 0.1, I don't even know what, what's an acceptable ratio, but it, it should scale with buildings or even better than buildings, construction cost of buildings. Um, but okay. Army position on moving a front line will be made more persistent, ensuring that armies do not reposition themselves by traveling to a different position on the front line um, after the line moves uh, if they are still valid where they currently are. So this is fantastic. Um, currently, it's really, really miserable to fight a war in Canada or, uh, you know, kind of Siberia, northern China, uh, because guys will detach from the front. They will be unable to get to the front uh, before the front gets pushed. 
and um, they will also just get yeeted into Nowheresville uh, quite often. Although this, I don't think the this is going to stop the yeeting. The yeeting usually uh, is caused when a front, the nature of a front changes, um, and uh, the this is still valid implies that the nature of the front is going to change sometimes, um, invalidating uh, current like setups uh, and causing armies to get yeeted around the place. But this does seem to be an improvement that they're talking about. Uh, this should prevent fronts from suddenly becoming poorly defended uh, after a successful invasion and make the military system generally feel more stable to interact with. Of course, this will also prevent you as the player to, uh, from uh, stacking um, like. Uh, rapid advance along with troop movement speed um, to just uh, push through the enemy without them ever being able to catch you on the front. Uh, this will be harder to do if this is the case, uh, but I think that's probably a good thing. And speaking of military issues, the bug where defeated admirals won't be restored back into action when they have recovered sufficient manpower will also be addressed. Much like the loud car, it will be... That was a really loud car. That one sounds expensive. Um, much like the loud car will also be addressed, um, you, a loud car is really truly just like an admiral. And if you can't uh, follow that analogy, I don't know if I can help you. Certainly we're not going to explain that analogy. Okay, let's continue on. Uh, several crashes have been fixed, including a crash relating to transferring of building ownership and issues rendering GUI widgets on Mac. We're not on a Mac and... Okay. Uh, Hotfix one... We also, like, basically... I think we've crashed, like, once or... No, we've actually crashed, like, uh, over a dozen times, but the only times we crashed was during the UK run, where we had over 50,000 construction, and that was the construction crash, I guess. So, other than that, I, don't, I think we've crashed, like, once. Uh, Hotfix 1.7.6 will introduce a few uh, minor bug fixes and tweaks to AI beha uh, behavior and leverage uh, resistance. Uh, currently, like, leverage, I think, is uh, a little bit bugged. Uh, in the way it generates and is not something we've like looked at super super closely um, uh, but okay uh, and last but not least uh, some UI improvement uh, per system performance improvements fantastic that should make the game run a bit smoother uh, still super delighted with the the speed of the game right now after 1.7 1.7 made the game so much faster some more extensive performance improvements uh, we have made will be coming with next update 1.0 due to, uh, due to they will be coming with 1.8 due to the risk of incompatibilities and issues involved with pushing them out with a hotfix. Um, so it sounds like we're going to get the game even faster. That would be absolutely fantastic. After literally every patch, um, the game getting slower uh, to getting two patches in a row, maybe, where the game gets faster. Very exciting. Uh, we are currently testing a possible solution to the issue of government employees that are heavily bound uh, by qualifications, such as officers in certain countries, being a bottleneck uh, for operations of government buildings, such as barracks. In particular, this is really a, a huge pain in the ass with um, Navy more than anything else, because those already recruit up slow and it makes them real slow. Um, uh, uh, but also, like, uh, the East India Company, uh, like, in the context of 3v3v3, the East India Company is significantly weaker as a result of the qualifications of the barracks. Um, they'd be a lot better if this was not the case. Or you can release Bengal, but that's a bit of a tangent. Uh, but, like, yeah, in particular, it's really frustrating when you build a university and the university takes forever to employ up and you're using, building it to try and get qualifications. Although, they've done something in the past, like, two patches or patch and a half where universities employ up quite a bit faster. So they've already kind of touched on that. With any uh, luck, this behavior should be improved on 1.7.6. Okay. Um, well, you call it luck. I call it being handsome. We need to put our most handsome devs on the job. All right. Uh, additionally, we're improving the visibility of existing improvement. Uh, we implemented 1.7.5 to let you more rapidly nationalize buildings. Oh my god, this is fantastic. Currently, Nationalizing buildings is one of the most tedious things ever. Now, to be fair, we don't really care because nationalizing buildings sucks. Um, but uh, if you went into RP, like command economy, it's just brutally like uh, annoying to nationalize everything. Um, uh, we are also working uh, on a greatly improved uh, quality of life tool to facilitate nationalization efforts across multiple buildings for 1.8, which you will hear about in subsequent dev diaries. So those of you who like to RP command economy and watch your line go down, um, you will be free to do so. Um, yeah. And so, um, currently set the control click to set the levels to minimum or maximum. Okay, so this is really nice. Um, currently, I would still like to be able to... Uh, there's a problem in the UI in that I cannot choose which buildings I'm nationalizing or which levels I'm nationalizing. And the biggest reason to actually nationalize is if it's foreign-owned and you just want to nationalize the foreign ownership. 
Uh, and there's nothing in this UI that facilitates that, but that's like currently like um, in terms of what's meta, that's like the only time you really want to nationalize. Um, I guess if you're RP and command economy, you want to too, but like you just shouldn't command economy. Anyways, uh, with 1.7.5, we added the uh, support uh, uh, support to hold control when clicking the plus or minus button, which sets the number to the minimum or the maximum. Now we're going to also display this message so that it will be more obvious to players. Uh, happy and nationalize. Like, oh, I didn't even know they had put that in. But still, like, you still want to target particular buildings or particular ownership. Uh, specifically, foreign ownership is, like, the only thing that's, like... We already said that. We're repeating ourselves. We really hate foreign ownership. Anyways, um, it'll be exciting to try out the strategy for forced nationalization. Um, specifically with unrecognized countries that uh, get an enormous investment pool, uh, but then you can get the reduced war score cost on them. Um, okay. At the same time, you could get mutual investment with China and build a whole bunch in their territory, which is good for you too. Hotfix 1.7.6 uh, uh, should be arriving in late August or early September. Uh, and uh, as usual, with hotfixes, we'll also be compatible with current game, the same files. Of course, we are concurrently hard at work for the next chapter in Victoria 3's Chronicle, Update 1.8, which we, you will hear much more about from Martin Wiz two weeks from now and in several subsequent dev diaries until then. Until then, that means they have teased us with a promise of a better future, but left us w hanging, uh, you know, for a darker Thursday next week. Anyways, I hope you guys, guys, I hope you guys, guys enjoyed. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, please feel free to like, comment, subscribe. And other than that, other than that, happy Thursday.